So the first step you're going to want to do is to cut everything out. You're going to cut all of the pieces for the straps, the neck binding, both the front and the back, and the arm bagging all the same as normal. So those you're going to cut just like you normally would. Um, the, the quantity that it says right on there. You don't need extra of any of those. The next thing you're going to do is cut your tank um, front and back, again, totally just like normal. These I'm going to put into a dress hack so they're a little shorter than they would normally be, but they are just the regular <clears throat> front and back as they would be normally in my size. Then you want to cut a second set of this front and back and that part is going to be the bra on the inside Now you can do that in the same fabric like I did here or you can do it in a different fabric it's totally up to you um, this pattern doesn't call for a thick fabric anyway so you wouldn't want to use something super thick here um, you, you know you, your tank wouldn't be out of something super thick so the using a, the same fabric would be presumably you know on the thinner side but you could choose something even thinner if you wanted to so <clears throat> you're going to cut a second set but you can see that these are cut really short um, compared to the length of the tank how long you want that to be is entirely up to you um, your bust size and all of that so how are you going to know this without having made one already that's the question, right? You can't really test how long this needs to be until you've already made one. So you want to just sort of make a guess on how long you want this to be. How I made my guess on that was by referencing um, ready-made um, similar sort of tank type bra, sports bras that I had in my um, closet. So all of these I measured um, both this distance from the armpit to the bottom as well as the overall length. But note that that overall length um, is going to be adjustable by the strap length on your, on your dune tank. So we're really more concerned with how long it is from like the armpit to the bottom. And I've got three different ones here and you can see they all range um, in how long they are. These three are all slightly different lengths, but they're all in the same general ballpark. This one's the longest, obviously. So what you wanna do is cut that length to be slightly longer than you think it needs to be because you could always trim it, plus the width of the elastic that you're gonna add. Because we're gonna do it like this one where it's folded up, so you need that extra distance of the width of your elastic. So whatever the width of the elastic is, like if it's three quarters or an inch uh, or half inch, whatever you decide you want to use there, um, you want that extra. So let's say you wanted this to be three inches, you'd want to cut this to be three and a half because you'd want that little extra bit for where the elastic is going to be. Um, at that point, <clears throat> we're going to begin assembling very similar to how we would um, the regular tank. You're going to take your front and back of the bra section and we're going to put those right sides together and we're going to seam them on the sides just like we would if we were going to make them into a finished tank. <clears throat> you're going to do the same thing on your actual tank front and back. You're going to put them right sides together and you're going to pin and seam them on the sides as well. So we're going to do that first and then come back here and continue on assembling them. All right, so I have sewn my side seams on both the tank outer and the internal bra tank. So you want to turn the outer tank right side out and you want to have the bra part of the tank wrong side out because we're going to put these wrong sides together inside the tank. So make sure you've got the front and the backs lined up. Just a reminder that the back is the lower scoop so you just want to make sure you've got the lower scoops face to face so I'm going to open up the outer tank and drop the bra tank inside so they are wrong sides together and I'm gonna line up all along the necklines and the armholes 
And what's going to happen is we're going to just bind all of these together as one unit, but um, it can be really beneficial and helpful to baste them all together first. The seam allowance when you put the binding on is only um, a quarter inch, so you want to make sure that when we go to do the basting that you're staying within your quarter inch. So we're just going to take a minute here and pin all of these layers together being really careful to keep your raw edges lined up. All right, <clears throat> so there we have all of those edges around the neckline pinned together. So both necklines and both arm holes all pinned together. I'm going to take this over to our straight stitch machine. So just a regular conventional stitch is fine here because it's just a baste. And we're going to baste around all of those openings all around the entire upper part of the tank at an eighth, one eighth seam allowance because we want it to be within our quarter inch seam allowance. So just be really careful, especially at these corners uh, at the top to not squish them down into your machine. You might find that it's easier instead of pivoting at those to just sew right off and then pick up and sew down instead of turning at those because you might get that sunk down into your machine and, and stuck. So we'll take this to the machine and I'll be right back here in a second to show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we have the outer tank and the bra tank basted together all around all the neckline and armhole openings. So there's the inside tank here. Um, it's just the little shorter bit that's underneath here. And they're all just now one unit. From here, you're going to bind the neckline and the armholes just as instructed in the pattern. You don't have to do anything different. You're just going through two layers at the same time. And again, you know, you wouldn't be making this pattern out of something thick anyway. So presumably these two being put together isn't going to be too thick. But obviously if you did choose something a little heavier for the outer, you may want to choose something a little bit lighter for that inner. So I'm going to go ahead and do the neck and armhole bindings just as written and then uh, I will come back here and show you how to handle the bottom of the inside tank. So I finished the rest of this particular project and again I'm doing this in the dress uh, hack version but you can of course add this shelf bra into any version of the dune tank that you want. So you're going to do just like we did in the previous step you've added the internal shelf bra and then bound everything in the upper as if you normally would it's just you're also doing it through the second layer and then you're going to finish the bottom and the top however you want so again i've got my straps here and then if this were just the tank top then this would just be going down and you'd have a hem but i've got the skirt attached here because this is the dress hack version so the first thing you're going to do is get your elastic now you will have already decided how wide your elastic is going to be because that's how much extra you extended down um, the tank top, uh, the bra part of this. 
So you're going to grab your elastic and you're going to wrap this around your body at this point on your body. So like sort of your under bust, like right underneath where your bust is. And you want it to be good and snug. You want it to pull nice and snug, but you know, again, this is totally up to you, like how you, how tight you want it to fit. Um, you're gonna cut that length of elastic and you're gonna overlap. Make sure you you cut it with a little extra so that there's overlap. Um, so I left about an inch of overlap on mine. You can leave like a half inch to an inch. I wouldn't leave much less than a half inch because there will be a good amount of strain on it. And more than an inch obviously just adds bulk. So I've added about an inch of overlap. And I'm gonna take this to my machine and just sew these two together and then come back here and show you how to put it into this little extra bra piece we have here. All right, so I've attached the two layers of my elastic together and I just did a simple X with a square in the center. Anything that holds with good amount of stretch and strain on it is fine. Um, and again, you've got a decent amount of overlap there so that it's really gonna hold well together. Now, I've already notched the center of the bottom of this shelf bra insert. So if you haven't done that already, that's gonna be your first step, is to notch the bottom center of both the front and the back so that we have a four anchor points to attach the elastic to. We wanna now divide this up into quarters. Now, wherever you put this piece is obviously, again, optional. Um, I usually put it in the center back just because I don't like it on a side. So I'm going to find the center of that and I'm going to call that center back. And I'm just going to mark it with a pin so that I have that center marked. I'm going to find the point opposite that. So there's that guy and here will be the point opposite. And again, I'm gonna mark that with a pin. If I put those two together, I can now find the halfway point to the left and to the right, and that will then divide the elastic up into quarters. So this is now divided up into four equal sections right here. And I have, again, notches in four equal spots around the bottom of this shelf bra. So first step, identify your front and back. So this is my back. So I know that that's where I want that overlap piece to be. And I'm going to raise the shelf bra up and just tuck the straps and everything down inside. The elastic is going to get pinned to the wrong side of the bottom of this shelf bra. So this is the back and that's where I want that overlap to be. So I'm going to find my center notch here and I'm going to line up the center back of the elastic with the center back of the tank, uh, the shelf bra. I'm gonna go around to the other four anchor points. So I'm pinning at the side seam. And then the opposite side seam. And then I'm gonna pin at the center front. Again, you're gonna just find your notch and pin at that notch. Make sure your elastic is not twisted in this process. And you're lining up the elastic with the raw edge of the bottom of the tank, the shelf bra. So those sections in between are gonna need to be stretched to fit as you're sewing. Now you can, if you want, divide this up four more times and find the center of each quarter section so that you're only having to stretch that little bit in between. 
Um, so you can definitely do that as well if this distance just feels way too long to, to you know, do on your machine as you're sewing. Um, you absolutely want to sew this with a stretch stitch and I prefer to do it with, if you have a serger, this is a great moment for a serger, but um, if you don't, you just want to sew close to the edge here because what's going to happen is we're going to sew these two together close to this edge, this upper edge, and then the whole thing's going to get flipped to the inside and then it's going to get top stitched in place with another stretch stitch. So the fabric is going to wrap itself around the elastic, which is why we left that little extra bit at the bottom of our shelf bra length. So we're going to take this to the machine and uh, we're going to attach the two at the same time uh, with a stretch stitch. So there it is attached to the bottom of the shelf tank. Now the keys when you're doing that is of course to maintain the stretch throughout the process and to make sure that the, the stitch is also going to stretch really well. But you can see it's now attached, they're attached to each other and what we're going to do is flip that to the underside. So we're flipping it to the wrong side and you want to just pin that guy in place all the way around. All right, so there it is pinned all the way around and again this is just the bottom of the shelf tank and it's just pinned all the way around there. So obviously as we sew it this second time we again don't want to catch any of these pinches so it's going to again have to be stretched in the sewing process. So you're going to want a stretch stitch. Now in this instance we really can't use our serger. So if you have a serger, um, I suppose you could move the knife like totally out of the way, but um, I would suggest using just a stretch stitch on your conventional machine all the way around for this step. And again, you're gonna stretch this in the process. You don't have to stretch it anywhere beyond it being smooth. As soon as it's smooth, that's stretched enough. And we're just gonna top stitch that elastic in place all the way around.
All right, so there it is all finished. There's the inside shelf tank inside the tank. And again, this is the dress version, but this could just be a simple tank top. And you could add this to any of these versions. Now, um, I just did a simple zigzag to hold all of those layers in place. If this being sort of a separate thing is annoying for you, you can also tack it down just over here on the side seam. And all you would do is just, you wouldn't even have to do the entire side seam from, arm, from the armpit down. You could just even do a little bit right here, right where the hem of the tank attaches to the side seam. You could hand tack it, or you could do a little stitch in the ditch in the seam on the front so that it's like held in place right at that spot. But that's obviously entirely optional. Um, and then that's it. You can add this, like I said, to any version. And if you want even more support, you could add a foam cup to these. You would wanna try this whole thing on and position the cups inside and then you would just simply zigzag them to the shelf bra itself and that would give it even more coverage and even more like support inside and that's it yay